Welcome back if you watched the first video on learning to play Fire and Fury where we covered the first turn of the battle. So if you didn't see that I'll just give you a quick update and the uh, battle is the Battle of Mansfield and a couple of different maps. There's one old map and there's the map from the scenario which you can get from the Fire and Fury website. Uh, so I'll put those up on there as well. So the situation is the Confederates have had their first turn. Um, the Union have had their counter turn, and so the Confederates, they have uh, some dismounted cavalry on this flank. They have Mouton's veteran uh, division here. Uh, they have some more experienced troops on this side, and these cavalry making a play for this flank. We have some off-board artillery over here that's been firing upon Honeycutt Hill. Another battery here, and another horse battery here. So the Confederates are attacking. Meanwhile, the Union have moved up some dismounted cavalry here to try and protect this flank from the dismounted cavalry. Uh, this brigade has wheeled around a little bit. A couple of brigades have moved up in support and they're trying to hold on to the hill. Deployed some artillery and this uh, dismounted cavalry here has uh, moved to the flank to try and protect that flank. Okay, so that's the situation at the moment. So it is now 4.15 and the Confederates have lost one stand. A possible 15 for heavy losses. So 4.15, turn to the Confederate turn. Okay, so I'm going to start up on this flank and I'm just going to work my way across. You can order your brigades in any order that you like, but just to keep it simple, I'll start up this end. I pretty much know that I'm just going to try and uh, swing these uh, this amount of cavalry in here to protect them, protect this flank. They'll be in a good position in these woods. They have to be careful not to get flanked by the artillery though, so they'll probably just have to be careful and try and uh, refuse a flank there, maybe to conform to the terrain. Uh, the rest of the guys will try and move up. We'll think about maybe charging if we can. We do have this brigade disordered in the middle, the one with the refused flank. So they may press home the attack. We'll see what happens. Okay, so the start of the maneuver phase, we attach and detach leaders and replace fallen leaders and so on. But I'm not attaching anyone at this stage. I don't feel desperate enough to risk any leaders. So I'm just going to uh, maneuver majors veteran cavalry they're in command they're veteran and they're fresh so they're getting like a plus four to their roll or oh, they roll a 10 so they can move at the double quick so that's handy but uh i don't know if i want to go too close i just want to wheel them around and maybe refuse a flank i'm assuming this amount of cavalry i'll use the wheel template so they're not wheeling more than 45 so they could wheel right around to there and that's okay. I'm going to wheel them right around to there. Okay, so they've wheeled around. Horse handlers will trot along behind them in the woods. So they'll be able to see out of the woods now. Yes, they'll be seen and see and be seen out of those woods. So the next uh, brigade will be Bagby's dismounted cavalry. So again, they're fresh and veteran and they've got uh, their commander in range or they rolled a one, but they're plus four. So that goes to a five on the table. They're well handled if they're in good order and they could move. They're moving through the woods to the limit to an eight inch move. Well handled. I mean, at the double quick, they could move through the woods. They could move a bit further. Now broken ground, they could move their normal 12 if they wanted to. I don't want to mask my artillery, so they're going to oblique up through the woods. And 
form up here. They're not going to mask their artillery, so they have moved forward as well, pressing the attack. So next we have Vincent's Brigade and a small unit. They will see what they roll. They are veteran, fresh, commander. Yeah, they're fine. They can move up as well. And I'm just going to wheel them around oh, that way. Just wheel them up to 45 and then just move up there, not masking those guns, but they're acting as a little reserve unit, I guess. They should have their little horse handles behind them. Okay, now, Mouton's brigade in the middle. So we have Grey, and Grey has got their veterans, and they've got Commander, and they're fresh, and so on. Um, will they press the attack? I don't think they're in range, unless they get a move at the double quick. Oh yeah, they could, they could charge the brigade on the hill, but they will cop a fair bit of uh, defensive fire. I don't think it, think it might not be worth it at the moment. So I'm just going to move them up into musket range and see if we can wear them down first. Oh, they've got a tent, so they've got plenty of movement. They're going to mask those guns, so I might have to come back and limber up the, the uh, horse battery here and get them out of the way. So they will uh, maneuver up. Let's think about what we're going to do. Let's see how we go. We're going to get that tree out of the way. So they'll just wheel, slide them out. Then move forward. It'll be right up in canister range, but let's and then cop a fair bit of defensive fire. Their orders are to attack. There they go. Okay, so next to them we have uh, Polynux, the Frenchman's Brigade. And they are... Um, they're in good order. They've got a couple of commanders. They're an exceptional brigade commander. They've rolled an eight, so they can move at the double quick as well. But they're going to move up and form that line there. Let's move the stick. But the defensive fire brings. This is the Union's chance to halt the attack, but there will be plenty of offensive fire coming in there as well. So they have moved up. Oops, wrong, wrong camera. Yeah. All right. So next. We have a disordered brigade. Wall's brigade is disordered. So the 975, they've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, two, four, six, eight. So they're still fresh. So they're getting a plus yeah. two. And on the disordered table, they're fresh and got a commander. So they're plus three. That's a six. So a six, they rally, return to good order, may half move or deploy from column two. So they, they rally. And they can make a half move. Now that rough ground is going to slow them down to eight inches. So they could move four inches forward into the orchard. So there you go, my nice neat orchard. And we're going to oblique a little bit to keep out of the way. Division there. Oh, my orchard's getting all messed up. So that's uh, them moved up. And the guy behind them. It's a bit of a log jam here. So we've got. Let's see what we get. Yes, they're no problem. So they will just wheel around and move up behind them. I don't know if that's a good thing or not. Okay, so behind them we've got Randall's Brigade, who are fresh and they have a commander in range. So. Plus three at least, they're out there fine. 
and they are going to oblique as they go forward. Just want them up next to them. So they'll probably be just behind them on that fence line there. Get three out of the way. Make sure I'm not moving these guys. I'm going to stay the same facing, but just go ahead there. But so they've moved up there as well. And then I've got B's cavalry way out on the flank. Here. Cavalry. There's no commander in range, but they're veterans and they're fresh, so they're getting a plus three on their own. Oh, they're older nine, so they can move at the double quick. So they wheel a little bit, so they're going to wheel a little bit. So they can get up through that gap. So they point themselves towards that gap there. So that's yeah, about not two and a half through any one. They are at a bit of a risk there, getting enfiladed, but they've they have moved way up that flank now. There you go, you can see these cavalry. Right, now I've got to think about the artillery that I've left behind in different places. So this gun should be able to shoot up the hill as long as these guys aren't within four. Not in that line there. Uh, this gun should be able to shoot up the hill now. No, we might have to shoot at another target. So what I might do is I might limber up this artillery and move it up. So that artillery is limbered up, limbered and moved. This artillery as well will limber. Move. Let's get them right up there. So the other artillery on the hill will have a good position to shoot at somebody over there. So I think that is all my movement. So at the end of the move phase, move all my commanders. So I will move green up here. Taylor will move up and support the attack. Mouton up there. Walker up here. And I think that is it. These fences are a bit rough on this um, teddy bear fur mat. My rivers don't sit down flat. Okay, so now we have defensive fire. So we'll work out who's going to shoot and add up their fire points. Now musketry range is 8 inches, so we will have quite a few uh, units in shooting range. So let's start up this end. We've got, uh, unfortunately for our Walls Brigade, he has got three guns pointed at him. If we look at the arc, I'm trying to choose the best option for the, uh, for the Union. They've got... This gun can shoot at them, or this gun could shoot at these guys. So I'll say these two guns will shoot at Wall's Brigade in the orchard. So we'll measure the range and add up the fire points. That's all that's going to be shooting at them. So it's within 12 inches, those two guns, and they are... RN and LR. RN. So at 12 inches, four fire points and four fire points so it's eight fire points so that's going to give them a plus one no no pluses eight six to eight so just a straight roll they don't perfect anything so those guys in the orchard they're copying a straight roll and then they are experienced oh a ten well, there's no attached uh leader but those guys are now low on ammo. So one of those guns is low on ammo, and they've both fired. They both contributed four fire points, so we'll just say that one is now low on ammo. There's no attached leaders, so we'd have to roll for them. But if we look on the chart, the pen is... For an experienced unit, telling fire. Brigade disordered, lose one troop, stand 
and so they've just rallied but now they're um disordered again and they lose another stand so they are now worn Yeah, two, four, six, seven. They're down to seven and they're warm. Let's so stick that guy next to them there. So that's that. That's good shooting there. Now over here we've got um, this gun is in arc to shoot at uh, the French guy's brigade. Plus they've got one, two, three, four, five, five stands. And they're at long range so they're getting one fire point each i think they're armed with rifled muskets so rifled muskets out to eight inches is one fire point so they're getting one two three four five they're disordered um so half fiery points so five do you round up or down i have to work that out in a minute um so five let's say three i'll round up for now and uh the battery at that range is about seven inches and that is volume at seven inches just out of um canister range so four plus three so seven fire points no modifiers Let's see what they roll nine oh another one a telling fire so they have fired that gun fired they lose a stand and they're also disordered oh things are falling apart here for the, the confederates they're losing stands their defensive fire it's all happening so they have become disordered with their marker on the road there so that's uh that's it for them All right, next, uh, that brigade that's on the hill has got a couple of stands, disordered stands, plus the gun. And the gun is at, oh, those other guys up. The gun is at six inches. It is rifled in napoleon six inches so it's got canister so in canister there can't be anybody in the arc so there's no friends in the arc so it's going to be able to fire canister at them so it'll be six fire points uh, got the right number yeah six plus another couple so eight fire points so eight fire points is no modifiers and um No other modifiers there, so we'll see what we roll. Ooh, a seven. Seven. Uh, telling fire, one stand, uh, and disordered. Another one. It's dropping like flies here. So I've lost four stands now, and they're disordered. So they're taking some telling fire. Oh, I should have added some more there. Hang on. One, two, three, four. Four. So it wouldn't give them another plus one, but the roll to seven doesn't it's not going to change the result. Okay. So they've got about that. Forgot about those extra guys there firing. But they would have to shoot at someone else. So they fired. Gun fired. And those guys fired. Okay. And then Okay, then over on this flank we have got uh, the dismounted cavalry shooting at the other dismounted cavalry in the woods and i sus suspect there won't be much happening here because uh, we've got one two three four five six six fire points something from over there but their uh six fire points doesn't give you any pluses i think it gives you a zero but um they're deployed skirmishing like a dismounted cavalry in the woods so it's a minus two so five minus two is three, um, and they are veterans. Yeah, veterans. So no effect, but they have fired. All right. So I don't think I've missed anything. Um, the four batteries have fired. There's been some kills and so on. So that's the end of the shooting phase. The defensive fire.
Okay, so offensive fire. So I do have the uh, artillery on the hill. Uh, these guys have got too close to the target here, so they're going to switch their fire this turn, and they're going to fire up this battery up here. So we'll see how many fire points we can get from the disordered unit down here as well. So we've got all of those, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, so half because they're disordered, so four fire points there. And I think these guys will add two each as well. So the range is about 31 inches. Yeah, 31 inches for both of them, roughly. So, and they are uh, rifled and smooth for 31. So one fire point each from them, plus the four. So five fire points on that artillery. Isn't that great? So it's going to be a minus one. I'll have a shot anyway from across the field. Oh, a 10. Yes, 29. Oh, so... Um, are they veteran? Is it a veteran artillery piece? No, it is veteran. It is veteran. But a 9. Um, battery damaged and silenced. It's all going to be 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Six halved is three, so three gives us a minus two. So a minus two to the roll for them. Goes down to a six. Uh, and they are experienced. Goes down to a galling fire. They're disordered. Um, lose one troop stand if already disordered or broken. Very disordered or battery silence. Lose one troop stand if already disordered or broken. Okay. So they lost a stand. Their first casualty. But they're already already disordered. And so the last thing I think I've got will be the, uh, the shootout over here between the two cavalry units. Or five stands. So five fire points with their rifle carbines. So five fire points doesn't give them any more as a minus one. So minus one, uh, minus two because they are dismounted cavalry. So a roll at minus two. Oh, a nine goes to a seven. And they are. All right, and the shooting is being more effective now as we're getting up closer. So the... Uh, the shootout here the confederates taking advantage of being in the uh the woods they fired well and disordered their opponents the brigade opposite them now i just check my range with these guys i think they're out of range to anybody there so that's them now everybody else has fired so that's the end of the shooting phase the defensive fire from the bayonet and when you charge, yell like furies. Okay, so the shooting has hotted up. There's no uh, charge combat because we just moved up and uh, fired at the Union positions and took a bit of defensive fire ourselves from the Confederate point of view. So Walker's division is advancing on the right flank. Uh, Bouton's division has moved up the veterans, but they've all been disordered, but they've have in turn disordered and silenced and damaged a battery up there from the artillery. Bit of a shootout here. More disorder and a couple of stands lost. And on the left flank, the uh, the shootout, the Confederates taking advantage of being in the woods. Okay, so that's the situation. So, that's the situation. so we're up to the Union turn two. Will they charge into combat? Will they hold their positions? Their orders are to hold. So they might try and wear them down, but there will be some uh, defensive fire coming. Okay, so the start of the manoeuvre phase, we've got to attach and detach leaders and uh, replace for them leaders. But I think the main important thing is Langram's, uh, Emerson's brigade here. Langram is here. He's going to attach... He's moved a couple of, we've moved about five inches, four inches here to attach to that brigade. 
Um, this battery over here is uh, silenced and wrecked, so it has to uh, limber up and get out of musketry range. I don't think it matters what order we do that in, so I'm going to start with um, Emerson's Brigade. So they're still fresh. They've lost one stand, but they're not down to a worn status yet. So they're fresh, so they're getting a plus two. They've got their attached uh, divisional commander, so they're plus four. And they've got their uh, core commander, who is uh, Langdrum, and Langdrum is Ransom. So Ransom is a detached exceptional leader. So they're getting a plus six. Fresh, attached commander, and detached exceptional leader Ransom. So they're getting a plus six. They should be able to do something. There we are. So they rally with Elan, return to good order, may perform one manoeuvre. So the disorder will come off. And I know who I said I would uh, try and defend the hill. But they can see this disordered brigade in front of them. Which is uh, Grey's veterans. And so they're going to charge down the hill. And of course I'm doing this because it'll be a nice simple combat where there's one unit versus one unit. There might not be any incidental stands or anything. I like simple. So they're just going to unrefuse their flank, wheel a little bit, and charge down the hill with Ransom and Maflangdrum leading them. Thanks to Ransom's great command ability. All right, so it's really happening now. The Union are counter-attacking. So next I've got uh, Raynor's. Uh, okay, so Raynor is in a good position and there are con disordered Confederates in front of them. Let's, uh, let's see what they roll. They're fresh. Exceptional Commander and Divisional Commander. Uh, they're part of Cameron's uh, division. Five, yeah, they're going in as well. So they're going to charge down the hill. This all could this battle could be over pretty quickly. The Confederate attack could stall. Yeah, there's a disordered brigade in front of them, so they've come down the hill. So we've got another charge. It's all happening now. Okay, let's have a look over here, and we've got. Vance's Brigade, now Vance's Brigade has to move up and try and get rid of those dismounted cavalry in the woods in front of them there. So they will roll for them, they're fresh. They've got their Divisional Commander, um, Lee, and they've got Franklin, their Corps Commander. So these two, they've got extra, plenty of guys telling them what to do. Let's see if it works. Three... Five, uh, fresh five couple of commanders six seven so they're okay so they will well handled may perform one maneuver so they're going to go straight across and then they've caught out the uh confederate units there how far should they go they're going to go up here and charge all these guys straight ahead. By the most direct route. They've gone in there. And they might get a bit of help here from Lucas's cavalry. Here I am saying, oh, I'm going to just defend the hill, and here they are all charging in, right? So Lucas, under the command of Lee, has him in range. So they've got uh, two, four, six, seven. Uh, they are worn. They're worn now. They've lost a stand. They have, yep. So one stand takes them down to worn because they're experienced. Well, we don't have to declare in this role for them. Let's see what we get. They've got a three. No bonuses for Warren, but they do get a commander. 
plus one. So that's a four. Can't find any other modifiers. They're not in a canoe key position last. They've got their divisional commander is out of range. So that hasn't helped them. So they've only got a plus one. So what have I rolled? I've rolled a three. So that's a four. Shaken. Retreat beyond musketry and canister range. Alright, so got carried away with putting too much terrain on the table. Okay, so that was them. At least they rallied. Then over on the uh, left flank here, we do have Dudley's Cavalry. Now, Dudley's Cavalry, they can see Dee's Cavalry way out on the uh, their left flank there in the field up ahead here. So they can see them. So these guys, this cavalry are a bit of a worry getting around this flank. And then they're faced with Walker's whole division coming at them through the, uh, through the orchard. So I think they're just going to hold their position. I don't think they can do much at the moment. So they're just going to, yes, they put a 10. They're no problem. Got this battery here low on ammo. Okay, so they just have to limber up and move at least half a move back. So they're just going to limber up, move back to the back of the hill here, and they can remove their low on ammo mark. That will teach them to roll a 10. So we'll just uh, limber up this battery. Get it out of the way, it has to make at least a half move out of musketry range to lose its silenced marker. But now it's a wrecked battery, so I think that's half five points. Flory's brigade here, it's just a small brigade, four stands, rifle muskets. So roll for them, yeah, 10, bear no problem. So what I might do is, but they've got plenty of movement, so they will just oblique up there. So let's hope the combats go well for the Union. And I think that is it. Okay, so defensive fire. So we can see all these charges have made contact here. And this brigade has charged. So we're going to start up here with some defensive fire from uh, Major and Bagby's uh, dismounted cavalry there. So we'll have a look at that. And they should have had been able to see them as they charge. So some of these guys as they charge forward. So... I'd say maybe not the end one. So one, two, three, four, and then one, two, three, four, five. So four from there and five from there. And I'd say some of those would be at very close range. So what have they got? Rifle carbines up to two inches. Uh, two fire points. So these guys will have two, four, six, eight. 10, 12, 14, let's say 15, 16, 16 fire points at that range. Oh, that's quite a lot. So 16 fire points gives them a plus three. None of them are disordered or anything. So it's a bit of a risk here. So a plus three, plus three roll. Let's see what they get. there we go all right so six and i think it's uh what is it? advances brigade are experienced advances brigade experience six becomes a nine charge checked so if the charge is checked the charging unit brigade halts one inch from the enemy um it's telling fire disordered lose one troop stand so they're going to bounce back an inch and they'll be disordered Okay, so they have bounced back there. So Vance's Brigade bounced back. They've lost a stand. And uh, they are now disordered. 
Okay, so now so we've got Gray versus Emerson here. So uh, this combat here, not a combat yet, but just got the defensive fire from the Confederates. They are disordered, but they will have a fair few fire points. So if we look at... Um, is it Gray? Yeah, Gray's Brigade. And there's one, two, three, four, five, six stands left. So they're still fresh. That's not that makes any difference here. So six with their mixed musketry. So mixed musketry. And they're going to be shooting at pretty much point blank, two inch range. So six stands gives us uh, 12 fire points. Hard because they're disordered. So it's six fire points. So at six fire points, there's no modifiers. Um, nothing for the target, mar inflate or march column or storming column, nothing like that. Um, they didn't change formation, so it's just going to be a straight roll. Oh, it's a two. So, two, this, and they are an experienced unit, and so it's going to be nothing. No effect, and they charge home, so that charge has made it into combat. Okay, so we've got Polynac's brigade shooting at uh, Cameron's brigade. Now we could see perhaps that there could be uh, some pass through fire here from Walker's Walls brigade. They're, they're disordered as well, they're not going to be adding too much. But uh, this brigade here, we'll okay, just check so there. I'm saying that um, a couple of those stands will be able to defensive fire. So a couple of these stands will have clear line of sight through here to shoot them as they were charging down there. But they're disordered, so they're going to add one fire point. So one fire point plus um, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. So they're disordered, so six, so seven fire points. So it'll be a straight roll on them as well. So we'll see what we get. A four. And they are an experienced unit. Yes. So four versus experience. Lively fire. Brigade disordered. Or battery silence from cannonade. No effective only musketry. Charge home. So no effect from musketry. They're going to charge. So they've made it into combat as well. Lively fire. Yeah, so the brigade would be disordered if it was cannonade. If it was cannon shooting at them, uh, but no effect if only musketry and they charge home. So they're in there as well. So we've done that one. Um, it's about it for the defensive fire. I think we've got a couple okay, of so guns. We do have this artillery on the hill. Sorry about the shaky cam. Uh, this uh, gun is low on ammo, so it'll be half fire points. And this one's ready to go. They've still got line of sight across there, so they'll shoot at uh, somebody on top of the hill over there. Have a look. Oh, it's a six. Minus three is three. No, no effect. Three or less. Didn't do anything. Um, and I think that is all the defensive fire. Okay, so I'll start up the left-hand uh, side, or the Confederate left, the Union right flank. So this unit which attempted to charge in here, but they were stopped by the defensive fire. They've been, uh, their charge has been checked. So they've stopped here and they're going to uh, Four, shoot six, in eight, offensive 10, fire. 10, 12, 14. 14. 14 fire points, but they're disordered. So it's down to seven. So with seven fire points, there's no modifiers. Uh, it'll be a minus one because they're shooting at dismounted cavalry. So a shot at minus one. Oh, they've rolled well again. The Union shooting is going very well. They've rolled a nine. So that's down to an eight versus veterans. An eight versus veterans. Uh, telling fire. Disordered and lose one troop stand. Taking more hits here. You have to swap that out for a single stand. Double, double, double base some of these guys. Now the gun, those guns on the top of the hill there, I'll do that gun last. There's a gun up there that can fire, but uh, those friends are too close to shoot over the top of them. But it could shoot across over here at a, uh, a limbered battery. 
So this, these friends are within four. So it can't really shoot at them and it can't shoot it because these are too close. So there's too much going on there. So we'll do the offensive fire here. And 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14 fire points. The union shooting is going pretty well. 14 fire points there. Uh, which will give them a plus two. A five becomes a seven. And they are a veteran unit, so five becomes a seven. Telling fire, disorder and lose one troop stand. So they just lose another stand. They're already disordered. So they're wearing them down there. And he's got two, four, six, eight. 10 fire points. They're not disordered or anything, so 10 fire points gives them a plus one. A plus one. How are the modifiers? A one, two. Nothing happens. And any more defensive fire? I don't think so. Let's uh, have a look over here. These guys are out of range. And we've got this gun up here can shoot. So we'll do this gun. Yeah, so uh, this gun had to uh, limber up and move back because it was low on ammo. This gun was wrecked and silent, so it had to move back as well. So we've just got this gun here left. And he's got this target here in the woods here at, let's say, about 11 inches. And it is rifled in Napoleon gun. Uh, so up to 12 inches, 4 fire points. So 4 fire points is a minus 1. No cover for the uh, orchard. So just a minus 1. No other one else can shoot at them. So we'll see what they roll. Union shoot is going well. An 8 becomes a 7. And that's an experienced unit. Yes. Experience becomes it. Telling fire. Disorder and lose one troop stand. Well, they're already disordered, so they've lost another stand. Oh. From the bad end, and when you charge, you like furies. Okay, so we've got some charge combat, and we'll start with Gray versus Emerson. So adding up the factors here for uh, Gray, uh, they are veterans, man, but they're now worn because they've lost a couple of stands, so they're down to the worn level, so they're not going to get any uh, pluses or minus for being fresh. So they're veterans, but they're worn. They're not outnumbered by three to two, but they are disordered, so they're going to be on a straight zero. Whereas uh, Emerson's Brigade, they are, they are fresh, and they have an attached leader, so they're on a plus three. They're not disordered or anything. Uh, there's no other pluses or anything so the union are on a plus three so let's roll the dice and have a look oh it's a bit of a turn up the confederates are, are on a nine and the union are on yep, just had to double check so the attacker is disordered. They lose one stand and they retreat beyond musketry range and canister range. Defender can hold position um, and so on, so they'll just stay where they are. Okay, so they charge down off the hill here and Gray's disorder brigade, they're veterans, but uh, it helps if you roll a nine and they roll a two. So they have pushed them back and they've retreated back there beyond musketry range and musketry range is eight inches so they push back there beyond musketry range so on to the next okay, so the next combat we have polygnax uh frenchman defending against uh Raynor's experienced guys so i'll add up the factors and we'll work out what they are sitting on okay so on the polygnax, uh, charge table uh, is veteran and they're fresh and they haven't taken too many casualties yet so they are on a plus three i think but they are disordered so it puts them on a plus two so uh, you're disordered so it puts them on a plus two and then it is Raynor's brigade they are fresh so they're not veteran they're just experienced but they're fresh they're on a plus two they're not disordered or anything they're not supported uh so put them on a plus two so it's going to be an even roll 
2 verse 2. Let's uh, see what they roll. Oh, let the blue dice go in the box. 9 to 3. Oh, an even roll again. So this time it's minus 6. Oh, the uh, Union shooting has been very good, but they're going to recoil as well. Disordered, lose a stand and retreat beyond musketry range. Okay, so they've retreated back up the hill through this unit and disordered them. And they're sitting up here and they've lost a stand and they're now disordered. So the uh, Union should have stayed on the hill, I think. Um, they've lost another stand. And so things are looking grim. They've lost five stands now and the Confederates have lost seven stands. Okay, well, that's the end of uh, turn two. Both sides have had a turn now. Um, the Union forces look a bit scattered up on top of the hill there. So they've come off the hill and they've been repulsed back up onto the hill there. So we'll have to regroup next turn. Um, they still have some uh, brigades here that could do something. Uh, but Walker's the division on the right flank over here can press their attack now so things are looking grim for the union we'll see if they can hold on but it's not looking good those dice up the top of the screen there they sort of uh summarize the uh, union charge phase uh nines versus threes is going to uh, make it very difficult so um thanks for watching and i'll post this up as well this game's taking a long time with lots of breaks in between during the day here uh, so that's con uh, the conclusion of turn two. So we'll see what happens on turn three. But uh, I think the uh, Confederates, if they can rally in the middle, those veteran units, they should be able to press home the attack. Okay, thanks guys. Well, uh, please stay tuned for uh, round three. Um, I'll leave you with a report from General Taylor about the current situation from his point of view. Bye for now. Please send a message to General Mouton. Uh, General Mouton, please reorganize your division and attack the Union position on Hunnicutt Hill. I believe that uh, General Green, Scavery have uh, pushed back the attack from the Union forces on our left flank. Uh, I will send a message to General Green to assist you in your attack on the hill. I believe that General Walker's division will attack on the right flank. Uh, General B's cavalry are somewhere. I do not believe they would leave us blind and they will be out on the right flank somewhere. So General Mouton, good luck with your attack. I will see you on Hunnicutt Hill.